welcome parents. Just a few notes from me before you hear from your teacher. Firstly, welcome to what we hope will be a successful and happy, prosperous 2021 for everyone. May the Lord bless your, your households, your families, your businesses, your jobs, and may he protect us all and keep us safe throughout these crazy times. So the first note is times. School opens at seven and we ask the children are here no later than 8.30 sharp. That is when all the doors close and the teachers go into their classes and they start work with their children. We ask that your children are not late for class time. This is the time when the teachers sit down and chat about their day, chat about what they're going to learn about, whether it be the theme, um, they do their morning prayers, they do their morning routine, which is going through the colors, going through the shapes, obviously depending on what is age appropriate. If your child is late, they miss out on a certain amount of, of work that is being discussed. And then eventually after a few days of missing out on the same thing, they will eventually start falling behind. So we ask that they please be here no later than 8.30. With the COVID protocols, if your child or you is sick, we ask that you please stay at home until your doctor has confirmed that it is not COVID and um, or anything contagious, and then your child can come back to school. Obviously, if you have been in contact with someone that has COVID, please quarantine for 10 days. If you think that you might have COVID, please keep your child at home. Do not bring your little one to school. I know it can be hard for our working parents out there, but please, this thing will not go away if we don't all work together. We have to keep our children, our families, and our staff safe. So please be careful and be responsible. Part of growing up is bumps and bruises. And I'm sure you all know, growing up, we all had them. We had scrapes on our knees and we climbed trees. Now as parents, we have our little ones that we want to bubble wrap so that they don't get hurt. But it is part of growing up. Obviously, my staff and teachers are out on the playground, in the classrooms, and they are vigilant and they are watching your child's every move. But there are things that happen within a split second. Even just as we are trying to stop it from happening, it happens just like that. So we will try our best to prevent and scratches and fallings and bump and pushes. We will always do our best to prevent that from happening to your little one. But please bear with, bear with them as they grow that there will be bumps, there will be bruises, there will be falls, there will be pushes, there will be interactions with other children that might not go so wonderfully. And that is how they are learning to be social and what is right in, the, in a social situation. And that's where we also step in. We will always tell you what happens. And if we miss a, a little scratch on their leg or a bump, it's because your little one is so resilient that they have maybe fallen and we've checked and th there was nothing. And then later on, there was maybe a bruise, but they were so resilient that they didn't cry. They didn't show any signs of distress so please bear with your little ones as they're growing up as they grow go from class to class they become more mature they become more adventurous and a lot more brave our job is to protect them but to also allow them to follow through with those adventures and allow them to follow through with the challenges that the the playground um, provides another topic is screen time which i'm sure all parents are very familiar with and have heard of we ask that during the week, from Mondays to Fridays, especially during term, that you please cut down on screen time and sugar. Yes. So obviously, before they come to school, if they can have a nice, good breakfast, preferably some scrambled eggs or even some pre-neutro or something solid that will keep them going through the day, but something that doesn't have too much sugar, like for example, a bowl of Cocoa Pops. The more sugar they have in the morning, the less they are going to concentrate in class while teacher is busy having her ring time. Whether they are one years old or whether they are six, sugar does play a big part in how their brain is developing and how, they, how their concentration is going to be for that day. Screen time does exactly the same thing. 
the more screen time they have, whether it be at night when they come back, when they come home from school, or whether it be in the mornings. The less screen time they have, the more they'll be able to concentrate because the more their brain is being stimulated. I know it sometimes doesn't feel like it. Being a mom myself, having your children at home with the TV off and well, all electronics off and letting them just play can drive you just a teeny weeny little bit crazy. But even if they are washing your walls and making the biggest of messes just so that you can do what you need to do, then let them do that. Their brains are being stimulated and are working a lot more than if you just had to put them in front of a TV. So we ask that you please cut down on screen time. It is vitally important, especially up to the age of seven. Their neurons in their brains during the first seven years are busy working and rubbing together and, and forming new, new neurons in their brain. So the more, the more screen time they have, the less the brain has a chance in order to carry on producing and being stimulated is when you get the visual aids from your teachers especially my older age groups my seniors we encourage you to please put those visual aids up let them be up the whole year and they will absorb whatever concepts your teacher is busy working with instead of just putting them in front of the tv Obviously, I'm not saying that we are in a perfect world and TV doesn't exist. Instead of maybe using sweets or buying a toy as a form of a reward, then rather use screen time as a reward. So if they've really had a fantastic week and Friday comes and they can, they've been so good at home, they've been helping with picking up their toys, even my two-year-olds and my one-year-olds in teacher Ashley's class, you, you can start teaching them a little bit of responsibility we know they're still so small and we know we want to baby them and we want to mommy them so much because they are babies but even from just one years old teach them a little bit of responsibility at home when they finished uh, playing with their toys they must tidy up their toys because the same thing is being done at school so we prefer whatever we do at school that it be reiterated with at home just like the same values and principles and love that you give your children at home you expect us to give a here at school which we do every day and we pride ourselves in that care and that love so we need to work together in order to make sure that our children's holistic development is complete and has had a solid foundation built in this foundation phase in this small little stage of their life which unfortunately they won't remember us after they leave but we our job and our sole purpose is to make sure that that solid foundation is hard and strong to carry on building the pillars that they are going to use in the primary school and high school stages which brings me to my next topic of working with your teachers there will be a few times during the year that your teachers will ask you for things. For example, the pictures that we need of your little one and your family. Um, there will be times when we are discussing a theme and we would like for you to, to discuss that theme at home with them as well. Even for my little one-year-olds, when we're learning about the body, let's talk about the body at home. Let's get a picture up on the wall and let's learn where our eyes are, where our ears are. For my older ones, when we're learning about the body, moms and dads in the car talk about wh where your organs are, what do your lungs do, what does your nose do, what are the functions, instead of just finding out, because by now, when they're big, they already know where everything is. Let's talk about the function of it. Let's, let's push their boundaries, let's push that knowledge a bit more, because they are sponges and they will absorb it. During the year, your teachers are assessing every single day from gross motor to perceptual to cognitive, social, emotional, every single area of their development. In the week that we've been open, teachers have already been able to pick up which children need a little bit of extra care in certain areas. They will be chatting with you and asking you to play games at home. We don't assess in a formal way. How we assess is it with, through play and through games. That's how the teachers can then pick up. So when they're learning and to make it fun for them to want to learn more, we ask that you play games. You don't have to go buy expensive books or expensive games. A lot of the things that are taught can be done just verbally 
or just with simple things like getting pictures from a magazine um, if they are learning about the letter A like this week um, teacher Sabrina's class and teacher Monique's class they will be learning about the letter A some of them will be going on to the, the letter B for bouncy Ben moms and dads at home go through the pictures and ask them which pictures start with the sound that they are learning and then let them cut it out even if they cut skew and it's not it's it's not for marks it's just also then at the same time they're learning they and they are sharpening their their scissor skills so just play little games with them allow them to boost their knowledge our job is to provide them with the tools needed in order to get there as some of you may know my teachers have got two afternoons off a week, which will be the same afternoons for the rest of the year. During the afternoons, when they are here, please feel free to chat to your teacher about anything. If you have any queries, if you just want to know how your little one's been doing, please feel free. If, obviously, we all can't be outside now with the protocols. Only Tace is outside in the afternoons, and then he calls whoever and then the teacher brings that one but otherwise you don't see all the teachers in the afternoon because we're all at the back we have to look after the kiddies so in the afternoon if you see uh, you can always ask taste is teacher sabrina here is teacher jamie here please can i chat with them and then we'll we'll come and chat with you we are so excited to chat with you about your little one because we love them dearly and we only want what's best for them which also brings me to my next topic if for for any reason your teacher suggests any form of therapy. The three main therapies that are sometimes needed in this field is speech therapy, occupational therapy, and physio. Those are the three fields. The one, speech deals with language, vocabulary, and the pronunciation of words. It's everything as well as auditory processing, okay? Occupational therapy deals also with auditory processing, but also mainly focuses on the body and the fine motor skills and as well works on the cognitive skills. So if there's any concepts that your little one is battling with severely, for example, like the, the letters, the numbers, they aren't, they aren't grasping, no matter how much the teacher is playing games, no matter how much you are playing games, the form, the concrete and the abstract work goes hand in hand and our teachers do them every single week. The concrete work is always done before the abstract. Abstract work is on paper. Concrete work is done with their bodies. So playing games, you know, uh, forming with shaving cream, with rice, with mealy meal, with uh, going outside and forming with their bodies. That's all concrete work. Abstract work is when after they've learned that concept with their bodies, then they go into on paper and then they start learning how to trace, how to draw, how to, you know, then it goes from pen, from cokey to paper, that is the abstract, okay? So we always do the, the concrete first and we, we ask that you do concrete as well. And the only reason we would ever recommend therapy is if they really, really need it and we have tried everything. We have tried months of work with them and they still are not grasping the concepts or they are still very weak in those areas. Eventually, if we leave it for too long, we will have to play catch up. And then during that time where they have to catch up, the teacher still needs to introduce the other concepts that she that, that's on the curriculum for the rest of the year. And then they won't be able to grasp those concepts because they're still trying to catch up on the skills they haven't mastered. So when your teacher recommends any type of therapy, I know as a parent, it is quite a hard pill to swallow. My son had to do OT and had to do physio for two years. And it, it is an initial block, uh, it is an initial shock to your system because you don't, you think, oh my gosh, what have I done wrong as a parent? What is wrong with my child? And it, we are not saying that there's anything wrong with your little one. The sooner, they st the sooner a child starts therapy, the sooner they will end it. If a three-year-old, for example, has a lisp and starts speech therapy, they will be done within months. Whereas if we leave it until they are five years old to start speech therapy, it will take years to correct that, that bad habit that, that has been forming in their, in their mouths for such a long period of time. So that is the only reason any therapy will ever be suggested. No, the school does not receive any cutbacks from the therapists. We work closely with the three therapists at Therapy Works. 
we do that we we work closely with them and we recommend them because we know that they are good we do not get a cutback from them for any child that receives therapy a lot of the therapists are happy to come to the school and do therapy at the school with them i have a few little ones doing speech therapy once a week the therapist comes here sits in my office and does one-on-one -on -one sessions with them same thing with the physio and the occupational therapist you are more than welcome to always go find your own therapist that you personally know or you know someone who knows you are more than welcome to and we are happy to always work with them it's always better that the therapists and the teachers and parents work together to ensure I'm almost done, hang in there. So one of the things that we always have done is plan the events for the whole year. And then I give you an events fee in January and it must be paid before the end of Feb. And then it's all the events for the rest of the year, whether it be our school trips, um, the magician, the farm animals coming to visit, whatever event I've uh, planned, I put it all in there. Uh, then it's covered for the rest of the year. Unfortunately this year because of the lockdown and the level three and the uncertainty of where this uh, COVID situation is taking our country to, I'd rather not give you a fee upfront for the whole year just in case we have to cancel a few events. As I see we can plan an event and we are allowed to bring someone in then I will give you the fee for that specific thing on its own and then you just pay. So it will almost be like a pay-as-you-go situation. So that is how we're going to treat the events this year only because with the whole uncertainty of where the country is headed with this COVID situation. With school fees, just a friendly reminder that school fees are paid in advance, not in arrears. So they are paid on or before the 7th of that month. So for example, February is coming up, the invoices will be sent out from our third party gentleman that will be sending out on the 25th of every month. So you will be, you should have already received your February invoice. That invoice is due and for payment before the 7th of February and not by the 25th of February. I myself do not do the invoices. If you are in arrears, I just get a list and um, asking me to, to chase money, which I must be honest, is the least favorite part of my job. It's the only part that I don't love, but it's obviously necessary, unfortunately, because even though this is a home and this is a loving environment, it is also a business that we need to pay salaries and pay bonds and pay water and lights. We still need all that and without our school fees, unfortunately, we cannot pay all those things, wonderful things that we need. That's it from me. Your teacher is up next. She's going to be chatting to you about what she needs from you and all the, the wonderful things that you can expect from her and with her in her class for 2021. Good morning, moms and dads. So, unfortunately, due to COVID, we are unable to have our orientation meeting this year. So, what I've decided to do is just send home a quick little video just to try and, um, you know, put across the goals that we hope to achieve with your little ones this year. So, first of all, welcome to Great R. I'm very excited for the year ahead with your little ones. Um, so I'm going to try and keep this as short and sweet as possible and I'm going to get straight to the point. So the first thing I want to achieve with your little one is independence. So an independent child is a happy child. A happy child is a confident child. So what I want to do is at school I try and get your little ones to do as much as possible without interfering. Whether it's packing their bags, putting their shoes, um, taking them on and off, packing away their sleeping things. Obviously, if they need assistance, I am available, but I encourage them to do it by themselves, even if it's not 100% perfect, that's okay, because as adults, we make mistakes, and we need to teach them that as a child, it is also okay to make mistakes, even if things aren't 100% perfect, that is how we learn. So that is the first thing I want to do. So at home, if you could get them to do basic chores, unpacking the dishwasher, um, helping you guys at home with anything. I do the same at school. Um, we obviously don't have an assistant, you know, teacher Nuna helps both teacher Monique and myself. So I use, uh, the kids help me and it just, it helps them to feel like part of it and that 
I've now um, made them a part of it and to help me, and they love it. So if we could just do the same at home, that would be great. Even little things, unpacking their bags, taking it out the car, carry it into class by themselves. They unpack their bags, all of those kinds of things. So that's for independence. Um, sleeping. So the first day back at school, I didn't, the kids didn't sleep and they were finished. So what I've decided to do is I am going to allow them to sleep for an hour for the next month or two and then I'm going to cut it down to 45 minutes and then I'm going to cut it down further to half an hour until eventually we're not sleeping. Um, I am aware that a lot of your kids do not sleep at home. Um, but remember at school there's a lot more stimulation, they're interacting a lot with other kids, so they do tend to get a little bit more tired. So even if they don't sleep, that is perfectly fine, I don't mind, um, but it's just like that relaxation time just to chill. Um, but eventually they will not be sleeping at all. So for now, please still send their uh, mattress covers and their pillows and blankets, and then I will send it home to you on a Friday, and you could just send it back on a Monday. Unfortunately, once again with COVID, we are unable to send home homework just due to cross-contamination and all of that, but we will be sending home um, the visual aid. So you will get visual aids for both numbers and letters. You will get the full pack. Please do not do the visual aids at home until we have done it that week in class. So this week we so in grade R we do two letters a week and one number. So this week we are focusing on A and B and obviously next week um, K and D and so on and so forth. But I will be sending this home with you as well as I've got a few like goals and objectives and whatever that I want to achieve with your little one I will be sending that home uh, and then obviously you can just keep that at home so yes those are the visual aids but once again you don't only um, need to use the visual aids so they must practice forming on the with a cokey and on paper because obviously that's what they will be doing when they go to grade one and big school but obviously the formation you will just follow so you start at the circle so there is the circle Go around, up and down, ending at the square. Do not lift your finger. So around, up and down. So it does have the explanation there at the bottom. And that'll be for all the numbers and the letters. Um, but again, they can practice formation in shaving cream, in sand. At school, I use sandpaper letters. So I've gone and I've taken sandpaper, I've cut out all the letters and the kids trace over the sandpaper it's just obviously good for sensory development all of those kinds of things as well um the next thing i'm going to oh please moms and dads with homework it's super important that as well as obviously numbers and letters and perception and all of that we also do gross motor so every day please do one gross motor exercise with your child whether it's balancing on one leg ball skills sit-ups jumping jacks anything we obviously want to try and strengthen that posterior and anterior, anterior chain because obviously when they sit at a table that is what they use so a lot of the time when they go to big school there's misdiagnoses of adhd and all of that and it's not because the child cannot sit still it's because they are physically not strong enough their body you know always moving trying to adjust trying to find a comfortable position at the table um, and then they'll be like, oh no, it's ADD or ADHD or whatever the case may be, when in actual fact the child is just trying to be comfortable. Of course, if they are not comfortable sitting at a table, that is what they're going to be focusing on, as opposed to focusing on their the work at hand or the task they need to complete. So that is why, please, it is so important for your child to complete gross motor activities on a regular, daily basis. Um, along with that, we want to encourage counting, number and letter formation and identification, phonic awareness, those kinds of things. Um, just on phonic awareness, when it comes to your little one's speech, if you notice they are saying something incorrectly, please correct them. Simply due to the fact that, you know, maybe if they are mispronouncing the sound, when they need to identify it, they're going to identify it incorrectly. And obviously now when they have to try and read and write, it's just going to create a lot of confusion. So please correct your child. A lot of the time it is not a speech impediment. It is simply due to bad habits or you know, things like that. So please correct them. Um, and then, yeah, just when also when it comes to speech, don't prompt your child when they, if you know, maybe they're having a bit of a hard time or whatever. If they're moaning and 
Don't prompt them. Do you need water? Do you need this? Allow them. Just, you know, let them have their moments. And when they are finished, encouraging, encourage them then to come and speak to you. Just say, you know, I can't help you, unfortunately, if this is what's happening. So when you are done, please come and let me know what it is that you need. It just encourages them to verbalize and communicate. Because obviously when they go to big school and grade one, that is what they need to do. Um... Yeah, so for now, that's it. And also just with grade one, I've obviously encouraged the kids to do a lot here on their own. Oh, and because when they go to grade one, there is a, there are a lot more kids in the class. You know, there's not always, the teacher has a lot more to do. So that is why you want them to feel confident doing things by themselves, for themselves, so that they don't have to rely on a teacher for those types of things. You know, the environment, it's already a big change. It's you know, very different. So we want to try and make it as comfortable and easy, the transition as comfortable and easy as possible. Um, sorry, I'm just checking all my notes here to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I have. And then just a few other things that you could practice with your little one at home. So the tripod grip. A lot of the kids are using the quadrupod grip, which is incorrect. We need the tripod grip. So it's thumb, forefinger, and um, index finger at the back. If they are struggling with this position, what you can do is you place a tissue under their fingers and then you allow them to write. This gap over here is what gives them control of their cokey or their crayon or their pen. If they obviously then drop the tissue to go back to that position, that is the control of error. The child can identify that they have made a mistake on their own. They don't need um, an adult to intervene and say, okay, so they will see themselves that they have made a mistake and they will correct it themselves. And that for them is also very important. So that is just how you can try and enforce the tripod grip. Then when it comes to cutting i see a lot of them are lifting their um, elbow and cutting all the way around so if you see your little one is doing that obviously the bird i tell them they're not a bird so they mustn't fly away so you just put a book place a book under their arm and then i just tell them that the paper is a steering wheel so they have to turn it so obviously the child needs to turn the paper obviously if they lift their elbow to cut the book is going to fall there is the control of error. And once again, the child can identify um, their error on their own. But yeah, otherwise, that's all for now. If there are any questions, queries, concerns throughout the year, you are more than welcome to come to me. I'm available in the afternoons. I'm here until 3 o'clock every day. Um, if I'm outside in the mornings, you're available to chat to me. I'm available to chat to you. Otherwise, you're more than welcome to phone the school and I can chat to you. But I look forward to an awesome year with your little ones and I'm very excited to get to know them. Have a great day.